Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a heart pillow. As you can see, I'm trying to keep it in camera angle. Okay, so this is all one piece. You have a seam in the back, and if you want it to, um, it's going to have more of a separation. You can sew the two sides together to really get this strong heart shape. Okay, now um, this is just my first draft. I'm actually going to smooth it out some down here, and there wasn't a whole lot of alterations that I need to make on this. So um, I'm actually going to show you how to make this. Okay, this was done on the KK replacement. Um, if you need a replacement, Cindy Wood version, which is 42 and a 3 4 inch gauge, and I used the um, Lions brand Hometown USA in the red. You um, you will need more than one scheme if you're going to make this on this one. Okay, you can do the 41. You're just going to need to adjust for one peg, which is nothing. All right, but because working on such a big loom is difficult in camera angle i'm actually going to take and show you on my 40 peg 3 8 inch gauge i'm going to use worsted weight yarn okay so i'm actually going to take my camera down to where we can see better what we're doing now i can tell you in order to make this you need to keep in mind that if you've done a sock heel with a wrap and turn you can do this it's not difficult. Okay. So the first thing is first. Um, I personally like to do an ear cast on so that I can tighten it later. All right. And it'll make it easier for sewing the other half down. So what you want to start off doing is doing an ear cast on, but you do not have to. You can do a chain cast on. You can do whatever cast on you want. I personally like it tightened real good at the end so that I can sew my edges together. Okay, and um, it's not that difficult, okay? So it makes it to where you're down to one or two seams, depending. So go ahead and e-wrap cast on, and then we'll be ready to go to the next section. Okay, we're going to be knitting flat the whole time. All right, so um, that's something if you're not used to it, you, you should get well aware and acquainted with it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to knit all the way around. So our first row will be knit, okay? So you're just going to go in and you're just going to knit all the way around and make sure you get your cast on loops entirely over so that you can tighten them later. If you don't get them all the way over, tightening can sometimes be difficult, okay? So go ahead and do your row of knit and then we should be ready to start the process of the next step which is mostly going to be done on your own but it's short rowing with a wrap and turn all right and if you've done socks this is not going to be that difficult pause the video get your row of knit done and then we'll come back and i'll show you the next section okay here's where we're going to be starting our short row all right so first things first on what you want to do is you want to, and I'm going to slip that first stitch and I'm going to knit all the way around and I'm going to stop just before the last peg. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. So um, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to knit all the way around. Okay, you can e-wrap this, um, but if you want it to be able to stuff the pillow pretty good, um, you'll want to use the max weight you can use on a gauge. Okay, so you'll probably want to use a 7 on a 3 4 inch gauge if you're wanting to e-wrap. Um, you definitely want to use a bulky and if you're doing a 3 8 inch gauge, just use the max. Okay, so pause the video, knit your way around and stop right here. This is your last peg. You want to stop just before the last peg. Okay, so knit your way around and then stop just before the last peg. Okay, so we've stopped here just before your last stitch, as you can see. And what you want to do is you want to take the working yarn behind the peg around to the front. That is your wrap and turn. You're not going to touch it anymore. Okay, so that is called a wrap and turn. Now, you're going to knit your way back. Okay, and you'll see you'll have two stitches 
on here, okay? So this is like decreasing, all right? So what you wanna do is go ahead and knit all the way around, and here's your last peg on this side. You're gonna stop here, all right? So knit all the way around and stop here, and then I'll show you the wrap and turn here, okay? <laughs> okay, so what we wanna do as, as you can see, we've stopped here just before our last peg on this row. And we're going to take the working yarn behind the peg and in front. This is the wrap and turn. Then you're going to knit your way around, okay? So at this point now, you're going to knit all the way around, and then you're going to stop here, which is just before your last wrap and turn. So there's your wrap and turn. You're going to stop right here. Okay, because you want to be able to wrap and turn that. So you're going to stop here, which is just before the last wrap and turn. Okay, so knit your way around and stop here so that I can show you how to do the next wrap and turn. Okay, as you can see, here's our last wrap and turn on this side. Here's the blank stitch, and here's where we finished. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to take the working yarn behind that peg and in front, okay? That's your next wrap and turn, all right? And then you're going to start knitting your way around. Now, as you can see, you should already start to see a pattern developing, okay? So, for instance, you're going to, I'm going to show you one more wrap and turn, and then I'm going to tell you to keep going until you have six single stitches with wraps and turns all the way here, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna knit your way around and you're gonna stop here. You see a single stitch here and you see your wrap and turn here. Okay, so stop your knitting right here on peg three. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and knit your way around. Okay, now you can see here's our last wrap and turn. Here's the stitch we're going to do next and here's where we stopped. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take the working yarn, you're going to take it behind that peg and in front. That is your next wrap and turn, okay? And then you're going to knit your way around. Now, you can already see a pattern emerging here, even with there just being four wraps and turns. So now what we're going to do is we're going to knit all the way around here. I'm going to stop here and wrap and turn this peg. Then we're going to knit all the way around, and we're going to stop here and wrap and turn this peg. And you're going to continue this until you have six single stitches with no wraps and turns in between all these pegs with wraps and turns. Okay, so that is your goal, and it'll I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, get all your wraps and turns down to where you have six single stitches, and I'll show you what that looks like. And then we will go from there, all right? Okay, um, so you'll see six single stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you'll see a whole bunch of wrap and turns all the way over to here. And then you'll see a whole bunch of wrap and turns all the way to here. All right, and this is what you should have. Okay, this is um, the front half of the pillow. It's not the top curved section, it's just the front half. Now what you wanna do is you wanna go in and start adding your wrap and turn pegs back in, slowly but surely. So you're gonna start with the stitch you finished with, and you're going to knit your way over. So you're gonna knit six and then knit two together, and then knit seven, knit two together, knit eight, knit two together. You see the pattern here. Everything's a pattern, so that I'm not having to put so much focus on every single row, okay? So, there's our six, and we're going to knit two together, okay? Then you're going to start with the peg you finished with. Start working your way back. Let's move this up some. Okay. Then you can start knitting your way back. So it's knit seven, starting with the peg you finished with. And then when you get to the next wrap and turn, you're gonna knit two together. I'm gonna to show you how to 
get this started and then I'm going to tell you to finish up. Alright, so there's your knit seven and then you're going to knit the two together. Alright. Okay. Then you're going to take it back the other direction and you're going to knit eight and knit two together. And this is a huge chunk of the pillow. Once you get this done, I mean, the top half isn't much to do. Again, you do this on the 3 4 inch gauge, you'll get the nice big pillow that you want. You just want to make sure you're using a 6 or 7 um, size yarn to it. Okay. All right, so we've knitted 8. We knit 2 together. So it's a slow increase out adding the wrap and turn pegs back in. So at this point it's knit nine, knit two together. Okay. So knit nine, knit two together. All right. So we've knitted nine and we're knitting two together. There you go. Okay, so you're going to continue back and forth until you have no more reps and turns. Then we'll be ready to start the next section. Not so bad so far. If you've done a sock heel or toe with the wrap and turn method, this is not that bad. So just increase all the way out and then we'll go from there. Okay, we have completed. We're now back down to no wraps and turns basically. Okay, and we've ended up over here. Um, what you'll want to do is you'll want to put a stitch marker here on this stitch. We're going to knit for four rows, but we're going to be knitting that last, we're knitting the last stitch of each row and slipping the first stitch. What that's going to do is create a chain. We're going to be adding that back, all right, after we do our um, humps at the top of our heart, okay? So, what you want to do is knit the last stitch, slip the first stitch. Then you're just going to knit your way around. You're going to do this for a total of four rows. All right. So go ahead and pause the video and get four rows done. And then when we come back, we'll be ready to start the top of the humps. And what you're going to do is you're going to divide your limb in half. And um, this is actually going to be not too difficult. We're doing another short row series, just like we did for the main part of the pillow, okay? So it's all short row based. It's a good pattern to practice doing short rows with wraps and turns and all that jazz, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video and complete your four rows. And then when we come back, we'll be ready to start the humps. Okay, as you can see, I've done my four rows. I put stitch markers on the ends as well because um, we're definitely going to bring these back after we do the hump areas. All right, so what the hump areas include, you need to go in and divide the loom in half. And as you can see, I put stitch markers on your halfway marks, okay? And what that means is, for instance, this is a 40 peg loom, you want to put this on pegs 20 and 21. All right, and what this means is you're going to be dividing that in half. So you're going to be doing like a sock heel, literally, on the half. Um, you can divide it by a third, half of your loom by a third, or you can divide it by a fourth if you don't want so much of a hump. So, you know, 20 divided by 3 is 6 with a little left over. So what you'd want to do is wrap and turn until you have six stitches with no wraps and turns on them, okay? And you're only going to work half the loom. Then once you're done, you're going to increase out like you normally do for a heel, and then you're going to work your way around and start it on this half, okay? But I'll show you how to get prepped to start the next half. So what you want to do is you just want to knit your way over all the way around here. Right, and you're going to wrap and turn, okay? So. Correct half, okay. So, you're going to knit 19, wrap and turn. Okay, so wrap behind, then in front. All right, 
Then you're going to knit your way over. So it's going to be knit 18, wrap and turn, okay? And you're going to continue this wrap and turn until you have six single stitches left, okay? In between wraps and turns. So you'll probably have seven wraps and turns with a single, six single stitches in between. That's probably what it's going to be because 20 doesn't divide into three evenly. But it'll give you more of a roundy hump when you go to actually stuff, okay? Okay, so we knitted our way just before the last, and you're going to wrap and turn. So we've already done this. You've got the process, okay? We've already got you started. So you're going to knit your way over, wrap and turn the next peg in front of the last wrap and turn. You're going to do this until you have six single stitches, just like you did the whole loom for this part down here. You're going to do the same thing. Wrap and turn, wrap and turn, wrap and turn. So you have six single stitches, okay? So, pause the video, get that done, and then I'll show you what you should have, and then we're going to start the increase. Okay, as you can see, I've got wraps and turns here. And then I have six single stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Wait a second. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, I need one more wrap and turn. Missed one. Not a big deal. Thought I had it. Things I didn't. So you just wrap and turn and get your six. Okay. Good thing I checked everything out. I'm not filming. All right. So now you're going to have six single stitches between your wraps and turns. I'm going to end up on this side. Okay. So. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you have wraps and turns here and here. What you want to do is you want to start with the peg you finished with. Okay, and you're just going to knit your way over and then knit two together. Okay, so you're going to knit six, knit two together. Then start with the peg you finished with. So there is your two. So knit two together. Then you're going to knit seven, knit two together. And so you're going to see a pattern developing here. You knit the two together, you start with the peg you just finished with, and then you knit your way back over and then knit the two together. So you're going to be slowly adding back in your wrap and turn pegs, okay? so. I knit the two together. I start with a peg I finished with, and I'm going to knit my way over and then knit two together. So you're going to pause the video and you're going to continue this patterning. All right, and then I will show you how to prep the other hump. Okay, this is not difficult, I promise. You've done socks before, you can do this. All right, knit two together. So pause the video, get all your wraps and turns added back in, and then we will go from there, and we'll be working the other half next. Okay, so you have finished doing your wraps and turns, and you can see a little indention there. That's part of your hump. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. What we're gonna do is we're gonna knit our way around, okay? So you're just going to continue knitting in the direction you were until just before the last peg. Reason for doing this stitch marker here, okay? To wrap and turn. to get my way to just before the stitch marker on the other side. Okay, you're going to stop here. 
and you're going to wrap and turn. So this should get you started. You're going to do the exact same thing over here that you did over here. You're going to wrap and turn your way until you have six single stitches in between your wraps and turns, okay? So pause the video and get that done. Then you're going to increase back out, which should end you right over here, okay? So go ahead, decrease down, increase out, which should end you right back over here. And so when we come back, we'll be ready to do the last few rows and then do a bind off. Okay, as you can see, we've got a hump here, we've got a hump here, and we finished off here. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look over here. We're going to add a stitch back, all right? And then we're going to knit our way around, okay? And then we're going to purl the two stitches together out there. So we're going to do this for about four to six rows, okay? And um, we keep adding back, all right? So this is the last little step before we bind off and then work on finishing up our heart, okay? So, you go ahead and you knit around. Okay, we get over here and we're going to purl the two stitches together. Alright, and we're going to go over here and we're going to add this one back. We're going to do the same thing. Okay, and then when you get around here, you're going to purl and you're going to add this one back. You go and pull these two together, okay? Then you're going to add this one, and you're going to add this one, and this one, okay? So you're going to work for six rows. So you're going to work around, you're going to pull two together, then you're going to add that one up, and you're going to work yourself around, pull two together. Then you're going to knit around, add the next one, pull two together until you have no more stitch markers. You don't want any more stitch markers, okay? And when you're done with that, go from there. Okay, we finished our six rows, I believe it is. Okay. And now we are ready to actually just bind off all of the pegs. Okay. So I'm going to slip that first stitch, knit the next, take it back on. kind of bind off, alright? So go ahead, pause the video, bind off all your pegs, and then we will be ready to start sewing up and kind of assembling this thing, even though there's not much assembly required. We'll need to tighten up this cast on loop. And I found that it's going to be easier to sew from the outside in to make sure there's even stuffing. Okay, so then bind off and then we're going to go to um, finishing it up. Okay, I have bind it off and I finished over here. And what I need to do is sew up. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew from the outer to the inner. And what you want to do is you want to tighten up your cast on. Here's your end. You're going to go all the way over here. And you're going to find your earliest stitch. And you're just going to find your next stitch and pull. Find your next stitch and pull. Okay. And this gets it nice and snug and ready for sewing together. Okay. 
And you could do a chain cast on if you wanted to. It was kind of up to you what you wanted to do. Um, but I wanted to, to do this method. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and tighten your cast on. And then you'll have a strand over here to start sewing into the middle and a strand over here to start sewing into the middle. Then you're going to want to stop. Okay. So that is kind of our goal. So go ahead and pause the video and um, get that, get your tighten cast on done. And then we'll be ready to start the sew up process. Okay. So you can see how it's getting nice and tight there. Okay, at this point, what you want to do is you want to find the edge as close as possible. You want to take one half, sew it up to about here. Take the other half, sew it up to about here. Okay, stuff it as firm as you can, and then finish showing up. It doesn't matter which side you do. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to try to find the closest edge you can. Okay, and that will get you a nice clean edge. You can do a um, mattress stitch if you'd like, but because I'm trying to keep this pattern fairly simple, you're just going to sew it up. Okay, so pause the video, get your sewing done, and we will come back after it is stuffed, and Finish it up. Okay, as you can see, I've sewn from here to here and here to here. I've stuffed, and all I'm going to do is finish sewing that up. Okay, and that is how you go in and make a heart pillow.